So the recipe that we're going to be making today is a fish recipe, a fried fish recipe called tareli machi. Uh, tareli means fried and machi means fish in the Gujarati language of the Parsis of India. The Parsis are a group of Indians who came to India many centuries ago through uh, Persia. So um, this is a uh, Indian recipe using Indian ingredients that you would be able to find at your Indian grocery store uh, or at um, in Atlanta at the DeKalb Farmers Market. Uh, the fish that I'm using for this recipe is boneless and skinless tilapia fillets, which you can get uh, at any supermarket these days. Uh, you can also use any other firm white fish, such as catfish or pollock. Uh, try and avoid using uh, fish like cod, which flake very easily. Uh, you want something that's a little bit more firm but not too meaty so don't go towards halibut or those sorts because they're a little bit too chewy you want something that's firm but that has a, a flake so um, the first stage of this recipe involves the marination of the fish so that's what I'm going to show you just now and then we're going to uh, create the marinade in this bowl pour it onto the fish rub it in and then set it aside how long you set it aside for is anywhere between 20 minutes to overnight. So this can be a uh, easy recipe to do on a weeknight. You can do the uh, marinade the night before and then uh, pop it in the fridge and fry it the following day when you come home from work. So it's uh, ready relatively quickly. Uh, so the ingredients that are gonna go into the marinade are these. Uh, almost all Indian recipes you will find feature ginger and garlic in some form, uh, usually in the form of a paste or very, very finely minced or grated. So if you don't uh, use ready-made pastes, such as those that are now available in supermarkets, you get those uh, tubes of paste in the, in the um, uh, produce section, you can use those or you can buy fresh ginger and garlic and grate them on a microplane or use a, uh, a garlic press to mince the garlic very finely or if you want to do it in larger quantities which is what a lot of Indian people do in their kitchens is you put the garlic into a small blender and you blend it up and make a paste that you can then keep in your fridge that is accessible at any time. So what we have is a tablespoon of garlic paste or very finely minced garlic, a tablespoon of ginger paste or very finely minced ginger, uh, some turmeric, turmeric powder. Uh, you could also use fresh turmeric in this recipe but tr traditionally the powder is what is used. If you use fresh turmeric which is easily available these days you would have to multiply the amount by three. So the recipe calls for half a teaspoon so you would need to use a teaspoon and a half of fresh grated turmeric in this if you wanted to. Uh, we also use red chili powder, a teaspoon of that, however that is optional. That gives uh, a little bit of red color and it also adds some heat to the recipe. If you want to use a milder chili powder, you certainly can, but this is a typical Indian red chili powder made from Kashmiri chilies. Um, then we have some lime juice, the juice of half a lime. We've got some salt and we've got some garam masala. Garam masala is a typical Indian spice mix, kind of like an equivalent to Chinese five spice, although there are in certain regions of the country way more than five spices uh, in here. A typical northern Indian garam masala could have up to 11 different whole spices that are ground down into a fine powder. Uh, it's also quite easy if you have the right um, gadgets to make your own garam masala at home. Uh, it's made of very aromatic spices. So what we do is we put all of those ingredients together into the bowl. We've got the ginger, the garlic, and the lime juice. And we mix that up just to, so that the spices have a moist base in which to mix. We put in the turmeric the red chili powder, the salt, and the garam masala. Now since the salt is in the marinade, you won't need to separately season the fish because the marinade will do the job for you. Now depending on how much um, moisture is in your ginger and garlic, 
your marinade may come out dry or it may come out uh, wetter than this. Uh, you do want it to be a little bit wetter than this so that it can spread easily over the fish. So because this is quite dry, I'm going to add just a little splash of oil. This is grapeseed oil, but you can use any um, you can use any neutral flavored oil for this. So as you can see, that's made it into a sort of a thick dropping consistency, which is perfect for spreading all over the fish. So once that is mixed together, you just put it on top of the fish and mix it up. This is something that you can also make way in advance. You can make a marinade like this up to a week in advance. You can double the recipe and use it on chicken or um, other, um, other meats as well. So you just put that onto the fish. And spread as long as you're okay with your hands turning slightly yellow from the turmeric. You just mix that through and make sure that it's coating each fillet generously. Smells great. Unfortunately, we don't have smell vision If it's clumping in parts, just pick it up with your hands and just spread it in. So these, these tilapia fillets have been uh, cut in half down the length to make them easier to handle. You can, of course, keep them whole or you can also cut them into four pieces each so that you get larger chunks. To uh, help remove the turmeric stain from your hands, you need to wash them as soon as you possibly can. And if you find that it's staining your nails, dip your nails in lime juice and leave it on there for a little while and then wash it off. And that will help to bleach your nails back to their normal color. So that's our marinated fish that we will just set aside now until it's time to cook. Okay, so we're back now making the second stage of the fish recipe, the tarili machi. Uh, so we are going to fry the fish which has been marinating. So we've had it marinating for about an hour, but you can uh, of course marinate it for longer if you like. But 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes should be the minimum. The oil that we're going to use to shallow fry the fish is grapeseed oil in this case, but you can use any um, high smoke point neutral flavored oil, so canola, uh, vegetable, anything like that will do. Try and avoid olive if you can. Um, partly for the smoke point and partly because it has such a strong flavor of its own that it competes with the flavor of the spices and can change the flavor profile. So you want the oil generously coating the bottom of your pan And what we're going to do is we're going to fry the fish and uh, then after the fish has been taken out of the pan, the spices that are left behind will lend themselves to a sauce that we're going to make with some surprising staple pantry ingredients. So, oops. Just gonna use a spatula, get the oil heating up and shimmering. This does have a tendency to splatter a little bit, so you want to keep the heat at medium-low. Stand back a little bit. You should be able to get four or five fillets done at a time in a pan of this size. So tilapia doesn't take very long to cook, two to three minutes aside. Keep adjusting the heat if you feel that it's become too low, but definitely don't let it get too high because the ginger and garlic starts to pop and can um, get you right in the face. So you definitely want a pleasant sizzle. 
and you want to let it be in there until it caramelizes slightly on the bottom side before you flip it over. It's been a couple of minutes, maybe three minutes or so, until we've had the, we've had the tilapia frying. So we're going to very gently use a spatula to flip them over. Just get a little bit of gentle browning. And then cook it on the other side. Uh, people have asked me if you can do this recipe in the oven as well. Uh, if you just add a little bit more oil to the, uh, to the marinade, you can uh, put it onto a cookie sheet and cook them in the, uh, in the oven, about 350 for 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, you wouldn't need to flip them. Just put it in and take it out when it's uh, opaque. However, the frying does lend a certain uh, flavor to the to the to the spices that you can't quite get when you bake. So the fish has all been fried. So there were four uh, tilapia fillets all together. Each one had been halved lengthwise. So they have all been fried and arranged on this platter. So um, you can serve it just as is. Uh, you don't necessarily have to make the sauce. This is a, a delicious dish on its own. Uh, works beautifully eaten with the dal, the recipe that has also been given in this um, series, uh, along with steamed rice. Uh, or another really wonderful use for these is for Indian style fish tacos. You can uh, use each fillet in a tortilla or in an Indian chapati bread wrap, which you can get from the Indian stores, and add in some uh, green leaves, some pickled onions, some shredded carrots, um, maybe a little bit of mango chutney for some sweetness, and just wrap it up and it makes a delicious snack, a uh, meal, or even like a lunchbox treat. So that's our fish. And now we're going to make it in the typical Parsi style, which is to make a sauce that goes along with it. So what we've done is um, taken the fish out of the pan, uh, removed all the um, excess crispy bits that are lingering in the pan, taken out almost all of the oil, save a couple of tablespoons. And uh, what's left in here is the leftover marinade uh, in, the, in the bowl that the fish was marinated in. So you want to Heat the pan back up again, keep it on medium-high. Make sure any of those crispy bits are out because you don't want them burning on you and turning your sauce bitter. Spread the oil out uh, and then you go in with your leftover marinade. You want to scrape that bowl clean. So that was the ginger, the garlic, chili powder, turmeric and garam masala along with some oil and lemon juice and to that we're going to add a quarter cup of ketchup yes ketchup gets used in Indian food <laughs> some sriracha chili sauce or any other kind of chili sauce or hot sauce that you like this is two teaspoons, but of course you can use more if you want it to be hotter or leave it out entirely. If you don't want any and just increase the amount of ketchup, we've got two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce, a teaspoon of soy sauce for that umami flavor, some salt to taste and a teaspoon of sugar. All that gets mixed around. Make sure it's nicely blended. And then we add in half a cup of water, which I quite often will put into the marinade bowl so that you really get every last bit out. Pull that in. And you want to let that come up to a fairly vigorous boil before adding in a quarter.
cornstarch slurry which has been made with two teaspoons of cornstarch and an eighth of a cup of water that's been mixed together which is the best and only way to incorporate cornstarch into your dishes and help to thicken the gravy that is then going to be poured over the fish. So this fish can be eaten by itself, it can be eaten in the typical Parsi style as it was when I was growing up with just crusty bread and butter uh, as well as with rice and dal as a complete meal. Or as I mentioned in a wrap. So that's coming up to the boil. The cornstarch has a habit of settling so you want to make sure that that's thoroughly mixed together before it goes into your sauce. So once you've got a vigorous boil going, you just pour all of that in and start to stir. You only need to give it a few seconds to thicken. Make sure that the cornstarch cooks, which doesn't take long at all. These silicon spatulas are a great thing to use on these sorts of dishes. Switch that off and then you see whether it's the right consistency. If you'd like it thinner, at this point you can add just a tiny bit more water. I prefer it thicker because it really coats the fish. You don't have to use all of it. For serving, I'll usually put three or four spoons on top and then serve the rest on the side in a gravy boat or in a bowl and people can serve themselves to more of it if they'd like. And then garnish with some chopped cilantro and that's your tarelli machi ready to serve.